the lower longer rod form the lower boundary of the cockpit section running from the front auxiliary spar to frame 10. Formed from an extruded channel the longer on also provided for the main connection to the wing centre section via 60 2BA bolts that ran between the main and rear spar. The longer on is of a complex shape having to follow the contour of the top of the wing aerofoil and transitioning to provide the contour for the lower rear cockpit. The angled outer face of the longer on provided for the lower fixing for the cockpit skin. This method of construction had the advantage of giving a perpendicular cockpit surface to the wing top eliminating the need for large fillets required on conventional low wing constructed aircraft. There was a recorded instance where the connection of the longer on to the cockpit failed in service. The double row of skin to longer on rivets failed in shear unzipping the cockpit and rear fuselage from the wing centre section. The true cause of the failure was never established but was considered to be a result of an unforeseen and unique aerodynamic loading rather than a direct structural failure. The upper longer arm provided the upper boundary of the cockpit construction. It was the foundation for the attachment of the outer skins, contour frames, various combings and fittings, of which more details in following updates. The upper longer arm was manufactured from a very heavy walled tubular extrusion. The longer on ran from the main diaphragm bulkhead C update 3 to frame 10. The longer on was again of a complex shape forming the cockpit opening for the bubble canopy and transitioning to form the contour of the upper rear cockpit structure. To add to the complexity, all the attachment rivets along its length are radially displaced around the longer arm to maintain the rivet heads perpendicular to the skin along the cockpit contour. The upper and lower longer arms were connected via angled tubular extensions. The extensions were manufactured from tapered curved tubular aluminium section and involved manufacturing process. The process requires specialist equipment to spin the tube down from the larger diameter to the smaller with a uniform taper. The curvature then being applied by roll forming around the mandrel. The final form being qualified by pressing into form blocks. In all a time consuming and expensive manufacturing process. There are a number of frames that provide the contour form for the cockpit skin. None of the frames are continuous, there being no floor as such in the cockpit section itself. 
In reality, only the channel frame D provides any structural continuity along with the longer arm extensions between the upper and lower longer arms. Frame D is a non-uniform tapered curved channel section with integral flanges for provided for the skin attachment. The lower ends being attached to the lower longer arm by CNC machined foot brackets bolted to the lower longer arm and is fixed through riveted fish plates to the upper longer arm. The manufacture of the contour frames and intercostals was a conventional process utilising wooden farmers and bolsters to produce the skin attachment flanges and the double return inner flange. The Whirlwind Fighter Project Workshop is equipped with a large open gantry CNC machining centre which makes the manufacture of the large number of accurate frames at least tolerable. It can truly be said that for every prototype metal aircraft made at least one and a half wooden ones were produced if only to be used once. After CNC profiling the aluminium components, conventional equipment was used to form the parts. Shrinkers, stretchers, bead rollers, pyramid rollers, swages, press dies and all the required hand tools. If you wish to see a true master of the skills required, please visit Ian's video at Canada's Typhoon Legacy. Well worth a look. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of dedicated volunteers. If you feel you could assist in recreating this iconic World War II fighter, please visit our Facebook and web pages. Any donations can be made through our GoFundMe page. Also, please visit our active partner in the Whirlwind Fighter Project and future home of the whirlwind, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum. Many thanks.